This is Kilo, and I received a few messages recently after posting my video on how to impression a key using the handheld Lishi key cutter. If you guys haven't checked that out, you can go ahead and click this link up here, and I show you how to impression a key in a fraction of the time with this tool than it takes to use the standard file method where you basically you know insert a blank key into the lock, jiggle it around, file the marks that you find, put the key back in, jiggle it, file it, you know, it, it kind of is a time consuming process and in that video I show you just how quickly this tool can achieve the same result in just a matter of seconds. And after I posted that video I've received some questions asking what else this tool can do. I've been asked, you know, could you use this as a key machine? Could you use this to originate keys or duplicate keys? And my honest answer is I don't know. I purchased this solely for the purpose of impressioning keys. So, you know, I never thought about using this to duplicate a key or originate a key. And, you know, instead of, you know, trying to respond with like a 50 50 answer like that I decided I'll make this video and I'll try it for you guys and we'll see you know in real time you know I haven't practiced it I sat here for a second thinking you know of ways I could do it I thought maybe I could you know blacken up you know like try and trace the key with a marker or something but I think I've settled on the vice grip method instead of the marker and that's about as far as I got before I decided to go ahead and make a video response to this question. At first I just thought maybe I could try it myself and then let you guys know, but I figured a video is probably better. So I haven't tried to duplicate a key or originate a key with this thing. So we're going to go ahead and for the examples that you guys have kind of thrown at me, um, we're going to pretend that you know in a situation that this is your key machine you're on a rekey and you're finishing up and the client comes out and says hey can you uh, duplicate this key for me and you're gonna say okay I got a key machine right here so what we're gonna do is we're going to take their key and a KW1 blank and your main goal right now is just to line up the shoulders and this is important because I mean you see how even if it looks like it's flush it's not this is gonna be hard because with a key machine you have um, you know the jaws that kind of allow you to you know place these flush but we're gonna go ahead and Something else to note here is going to be on an aftermarket, you know, lock and key, the, the bow of the key will be larger than, you know, your standard Ilco keys that you pick up. So just to know if somebody comes at you with a, you know, a custom key or something, and this is all you have, their bow could be huge, and this could kind of throw you off. I'm just using a tiny pair of vice grips for this but you know that that could be an issue using this method you might have to use a vice which would make this even tougher so we're gonna go ahead and line him up and just clamp him down and he's pretty flush all around so we're just gonna go ahead and call this good you kinda see the marker I left over from seeing if I could trace it but okay so now we're here now what we're going to do and this is something for the question on originating a key I would not recommend this because I can already tell the okay so you see this little punch here the the little tooth this guy he is shaped more like a pyramid where a quick set 
cut is really wide. You guys see, so this is probably going to be horrible because that's not even going to line. Yeah, that's, look how much play you have. So yeah, if you try to originate a key like this, you would have to, you know, be really good at being on either side of the, you'd have to double cut this. Oh, that would be, that would be awful. And you'd have to eyeball it as well. That yeah, no, I would not use this as an as a code machine, uh, just because of that. Some of you guys asked if it you know you could originate because you saw these little lines here, for depths, and this tool is originally it was made for automotive locksmiths. So these are you know all everything on here is about automotive keys, and you know in the video I I impressioned a, a key for a mailbox. So you guys thought maybe this could be, you know, universal for everything. And this is actually uh, supposed to just be a, an automotive tool. So I don't really gauge my depths and everything off of these lines as all, you know, especially if you're trying to make it like a code machine, because you, you can't adjust these like code cards, you know, like a line number one. For a quick set, I guess you'd have to think would be a one, where a schlage would be a zero, and then there's only what five lines down here. So, I mean, schlages, you know, you have you only have six cuts for a quick, so it's not even enough for a quick set. And then schlages have a lot more depth, so no, I wouldn't rely on this at all for a, especially because, I mean, most commonly you're gonna just come across quick sets like that's the most common key that I come across this actually the shape looks like let me see if I have a Schlage key it almost looks like it would fit a Schlage key perfectly yeah look at that that fits like that looks like it was it was just made for a Schlage and if you guys have ever used a punch machine for code cutting you will know that you know the punch and die sets that they send you you will have to swap them out from schlage to quick set because of that shape so this one looks like it's pretty much spot on for a schlage so yeah i didn't even think about that before i started this this is going to be i'm going to have to double cut all of these so that's going to be even harder but we're going to try it so, you know, the customer, you know, hands you this, you put it in the vice grip. Hopefully they don't ask you to duplicate 20 keys or something. And we're just going to start, let's see, we'll start at the right side of this cut and clip him. And you see it's only half a cut, so we're going to have to, I'm trying to do this through a camera, so... Apologies if it's weird angles. So that's one cut and it looks pretty terrible. But we're going to go ahead and go to cut number two. And we'll go ahead and clip. And yeah, look how much is left for the other side of the cut. So that's going to be even tougher. So, like the less material that you have to cut with a punch or a tool like this, it can slip off of the tooth here. So there's that cut. This isn't too bad actually. Thought it would be a lot worse. So these are pretty deep cuts. So I'm going to kind of chip away a small amount real quick because I don't like taking big chunks out of keys with this tool. It just makes the, it just kind of makes it weird. Um, I don't also don't want to damage the tool, but make sure that's lined up correctly. So that's something else you're gonna have to know is as you're punching this, you could start to slide one key so if your plan is to use this as your key machine, uh, let me see, I gotta make sure that this is lined up. Because if it's not lined up, then this is all for nothing. 
Okay, so we'll go ahead and line him up straight as possible. And we'll cut. And then we got to cut that other side. That's rough. Yeah, you like barely have anything to clip. And then you see it's leaving that little bit of you know, excess right in the center of all these cuts. That's, that's gonna come back on me, I know it. So we'll go ahead and reline up our key. So this is already taking a significant amount of time compared to a, just a standard duplicator. I'm just gonna clip a little piece real quick and then move down further. And this side. Keys moving a little bit. Yep. That's gonna that's gonna cause problems. And then we got this really shallow two cut at the end. So this one, I'm gonna go from the right side first. Just because and then the left side. All right, <laughs> this looks pretty awful. That looks terrible. That looks horrible. All right, so let's go ahead and try it out. Just to show you guys that this key does work. No problems, no dragging or clicking. This is not gonna work. No, <laughs> there's no way. Okay, so what you'll have to do here, yeah, that first cut is awful. Um, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take our needle file real quick. See if we can't show you guys some sort of impressioning. Not really, but see if we can just get rid of some of that excess You know, key here, and I just want to square this one off a little bit better. Let's see if that moves any better. Nope. I feel like that first cuts. Just the fact that it's so ugly, the lock's like, no, I'm not even gonna accept this key. Uh, let's see. Let's try to impress it, I guess. Let's see, what do we have? What do we have? Uh, it's that last cut, too. I feel like these shallow cuts are the hardest when it comes to, even on a normal punch machine, it's like, those shallow cuts can really hold you up. So that first one... Let's see. That's moving a little bit more. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this this cut's kind of shallow. And you guys see just how quickly you can file. Oh yeah, there it is. Now it's moving. Okay, I think it was that. Fourth cut that just looks awful. That just looks terrible. Let me see if I have a flat file real quick, just to try and, let's see if we can just, 
Kind of just give him an edge. This key is trash now, but at least you guys get to see what you guys would run into trying this in the field. <laughs> That's a very rough turn, but it is working. So... Let's see if that helps it some. Yep. Alright. <laughs> So that's rough. That's a rough turn. And I mean, look at look at what you end up with here. So pretty sure it's just this this cut here that's holding us up. But this would be a terrible idea for a, a duplicator. I mean, it's gonna work. It's just yeah, that cut is just horrible. Um. Well, I hope this video <laughs> shows you guys. Um, you know this is real time like I said I'm not I didn't practice this beforehand I want you guys to see exactly what's gonna happen if you want to try this obviously it's always good to practice if you're going to try and use this as your key machine but in all honesty I wouldn't I would not recommend that for anything other than impressioning a key um, but that's really all there is to this video um, hopefully this answers your guys question I know the video is kind of long, but I wanted you guys to see, you know, real time. I didn't want to, you know, sit here and, and spend 10 hours trying to perfect this and then show you in a five minute video and make you think that this is, you know, some incredible handheld key machine for 40 bucks. Um, this is the real life scenario. So it, it will work. It's just terrible. So. <laughs> Uh, I would definitely invest in at least, at the bare minimum, a small manual duplicator and space and depth keys. And that's really, you can get away with that for a long time. But just to answer your guys' questions, you know, hopefully this did. If not, you can always message me and I'll, I'll post a follow-up video. But thank you guys for watching. Um, thank you guys for subscribing. We're up over 200 subscribers now. So, you know, I appreciate you guys. We're helping more people. I appreciate it, and I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope you know you guys have good luck on your jobs, and have a nice day.